Hi everyone, this is Matthew. I'm going to demonstrate for you today a process called acoustic recording. This was the process that was used in all the recording studios before the year 1925. After that point, the recording studio started to use electronic microphones to make recordings. If you went to a recording studio in the early 1900s, you would have been greeted with a site similar to this. As you can see here, we've got a large horn. So if a singer had to sing or a band had to play or a solo instrument, the sheer volume from that instrument or voice is transmitted down this horn and physically vibrates a diaphragm, which in turn cuts directly to either a wax disc or a wax cylinder. In this case, we're going to be recording directly to a wax cylinder and I'm using a 1905 Edison home phonograph. This is my setup that I've got for acoustic recording. As you can see here we've got the large horn and this is connected to a 1905 Edison recorder and we have here a brand new brown wax blank which is uh, very shiny all ready to record. I have this light here to keep the cylinder at a constant temperature. It's good to heat the cylinder up to get a decent recording. It softens the wax slightly to make it cut very easily. I'm going to use this instrument to record with. This is a banjo ukulele. It's in fact half banjo and half ukulele and some call it the banjo lele or ukulele banjo and this is made by Abbott and we call this the Abbott banjo lele and I'm going to play a little piece of music from a similar time period to uh, when this recording system was used in the recording studios it's a tune called wait till the sun shines Nelly many artists recorded it and especially an artist Brian G Harlem who was very popular in the United States at the time uh, recorded this for the Edison Company and Columbia Phonograph Company and also the Victor Company as well. But in 2017 I'm going to do my rendition of an instrumental version of it so I hope you enjoy. You'll get to see me recording this uh, so you can hear a comparison between how an electric recording sounds and how an acoustic recording sounds from that time period. So I hope you enjoy. Now the artists years ago would have either had piano accompaniment or orchestral accompaniment. Usually they used brass instruments because the brass instruments recorded well. Or if it was uh, violins, they would use a strow violin, which uh, some of you may have seen. It's a violin with uh, a horn attached to it to project the sound directly into the recording horn. Some of you may know that I play the piano as well. And unfortunately, I can't play them both at the same time. So what I've ended up doing is I've recorded the piano part on a compact disc and I'm using a guitar amplifier as a speaker to uh, play the piano part through. Now, as you can see here, it's very cramped conditions. And this is what it would have been like for a lot of the artists years ago. Uh, the conditions, it's, it's not like how modern recording studios would be. Uh, there's a lot of freedom that's involved now, uh, a lot of room to move around with but years ago the artist would have had to huddle around this horn and just basically project the volume into it so uh, and also if you make a mistake there's no chance of editing there's no like splicing of tape which of course came out uh, during the early 1950s so if you make a mistake you're done for you have to uh, do it all over and over again and it was a very tiresome process uh, for the artists back then that to be uh, bang on form all the time. So hopefully I should be. So uh, I'm feeling the pressure a little bit now, but uh, we're going to try this out. Wait till the sun shines nearly. I'm going to do an announcement at the beginning of this recording. This was common practice during the time because the artists used to authenticate the recording by giving the song title and the name of the artist and the record company. So this is what I'm going to do as well. As soon as I drop the stylus, it's going to immediately begin cutting into the wax cylinder. So I better not make a mistake or anything like that. So we're going to go for it right now. Here we go. Now, as soon as I drop the stylus, the recording will begin.
ukulele solo. Wait till the sun shines, Nelly. Performed by Matthew James Richards on the 13th of September 2017. I've just raised the recorder which has uh, stopped the recorder from cutting into the wax I've just stopped the machine here and uh, you can see these powdery shavings and we call that swarf those are the um, the little indentations of sound that have been etched or carved into the wax cylinder so I'm going to now turn off this light here and we're going to let the cylinder cool some and then we're going to see how it plays back. Judging by the shavings, I believe we've got a recording. We'll find out how we did and how it sounds. This is a close-up of the recorder and you can see it's covered in swarf from the recording that we've just made. You can also see the remains of the swarf here on the phonograph itself where the recorder had carved into the wax cylinder. I don't know if you can make this out on the camera but those little indentations are the grooves that we have cut. That is a good sign that we have a recording. The Edison system uses a vertical modulation type of groove. Hill and dale is what we call it, meaning that the stylus goes up and down. And you can see the little indentations if you look carefully there on the cylinder. So we have a recording. The question is, how does it sound? And we're now going to go and play back the cylinder. I've not played this, so we're going to hear it for the first time together. There's so many variables that can change the characteristic of a cylinder recording. For example, the temperature of which the cylinder was cut. That's a major factor on recording quality. Here we go.
have it. Wait till the sun shines, Nelly. Acoustic recording. I think that came out rather well. You probably noticed the contrast between the volume of the piano from the video to the cylinder. And that is because, of course, I was directly in front of the horn. So this was how it used to be with the artists from years ago. They used to have the piano mounted on blocks and have all the case parts removed and the soundboard of the piano would be facing directly behind the artist to give it maximum volume. I hope you've enjoyed that little demonstration of acoustic recording. Thank you very much.